Well, welcome out there. Uh, always a pleasure to have you uh, in a viewing audience, and it's always a pleasure for me to be here in the studio. I have a guest uh, who is going to uh, call in. He is uh, well known in the uh, greater Fall River area, uh, well known also uh, in Somerset, where he is uh, thoroughly and completely involved with the American Legion Post on Roosevelt Avenue in Somerset. We're going to talk about a few things uh, in regards to an event that's uh, coming up this Friday at the Post. And we're going to talk about uh, the American Legion itself and how it got started, uh, what, what the American Legion does, how to become a, a member of the American Legion. So without going any further into uh, that part of uh, the show, I'm going to uh, introduce to you Stephen Souza, commander of the American Legion in Somerset, Massachusetts. Stephen, Mr. Souza, can you hear me? Hello? Stephen Souza, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, Are we on? We're on. I just made okay, the- Okay, very good. I just gave uh, the introduction and Let's, um, let's start off with uh, something simple like uh, the American Legion itself. When did uh, the American Le how did the American Legion get started? Well, it's kind of an interesting story. Historically, um, it's kind of, uh, kind of interesting that we're even talking about this because next year we'll mark our 100th anniversary of the American Legion. And we are uh, by far the largest in the oldest veterans organization in the United States that has been um, uh, anointed by Congress. And I'll tell you how it started. Uh, interesting story. Um, Teddy Roosevelt, you know, former President Roosevelt, had a son by the name of Teddy Roosevelt III, who was a uh, lieutenant colonel uh, serving in Europe, and he was in France. And he and a number of his buddies uh, felt as though there was a need um, to establish some type of uh, an association or some type of a facility that uh, the troops could go and, um, you know, have a beer and, and socialize with uh, each other and uh, perhaps even relieve some stress because of the war, uh, you know, the sins of war. And um, what he did at the time was he wrote his dad who was already past president in the United States and suggested that, um, you know, if he could be helpful in the establishment of the American Legion. And what they did was they ended up bringing, the, bringing it before Congress, and Congress certainly felt that, uh, you know, they needed something to keep the guys and, and, and ladies out of trouble because they were, you know, getting into trouble over there, relieving some pressures and whatever. So... So what ended up happening was the establishment of the American Legion. And um, I don't know if it had something to do with the French Foreign Legion, but uh, they come up with the American Legion. Uh, the interesting thing, it was kind of like the forefront of the Veterans Administration, because what the American Legion did uh, back then was uh, they took a lead role in helping families of veterans, uh, whether they returned or not. Uh, their families, uh, you know, of deceased veterans or, or wounded veterans or, or people that had stress back then from the war. And uh, the American Legion stepped forward and said, we've got to help our own. We've got to help our, our, our own troops. And it was kind of, kind of like the model in which the Veterans Administration um, established themselves, you know, because, as you know, as troops come home off of active duty or deployment, uh, a lot of times there are issues, whether it be uh, disabilities or stress issues or, or even family issues, because you're away a lot of times uh, for a year or more at a time. So, uh, so the, the American Legion, uh, you know, stepped to the plate and they, they established a good thing. Uh, and uh, interesting, I, I was just a couple of weeks ago, I happened to meet and uh, be with for three days the, the commander, the national commander, uh, Denise Rohan, uh, who is the first female commander uh, in 99 years. And I met with her, and it was kind of interesting because 
she told me she did her basic training in Fort McClellan, Alabama, and I had been at that base, not certainly not at the same time as she was, but uh, but we had a good conversation, and it was it was good to see a woman stepping forward as well. Well, let um, me let me just mention that um, it, it's kind of ironic um, when you mention uh, Roosevelt because your post your post the American Legion is on Roosevelt Avenue and. In it is. Sense. It is. It's very ironic because um, just about three years ago, we we had a need, and we what we did was we in a basement we um, we remodeled uh, through the help of Home Depot, because Home Depot has partnered with the American Legion on a national level. Oh, well, that's and nice. We, yeah. yeah, we we wrote a grant, and they um, they established what's called what we call the Roosevelt Room, because it's on Roosevelt Avenue. And Colonel Roosevelt, you know, was helpful in establishing the American Legion. And every Wednesday and Saturday mornings, we have coffee hours for the now, local veterans. Now, and uh, we meet every every week, every week. Yeah, your post is open Friday nights, Saturday nights. Yep, yep. And we do a lot of rentals, so it may or may not be open for business. Um, but. Um, we have a lot of retirement parties, graduation parties. Um, this weekend, I think, uh, yeah, I think there's a retirement party and a birthday party. And um, and then which brings me to Friday night. Yeah, Friday what's night, happening we, Friday night? Because that, that's Yeah, Friday night. Once a month, we try to have some type of activity to get uh, all the veterans together. And this month, it just happens to be Polish night. Now, Polish it's night. interesting because... My mom was Polish, and she was from the south end of Fall River. Her name was Aliana Androniak. And um, actually, I used to speak Polish, and I know you do, Richard, but um, I've lost it since I've, uh, you know, since I haven't used it in many, many years. Now, Polish, but, uh, Polish night this Friday at the, at the American Legion. Everyone yeah, has to speak. Right post, everyone has to speak Polish. Roosevelt Avenue. Yep. Does that, does everyone have to speak Polish? Um. Only to get in. No, no, no. No, actually, you don't. Um, and what we're doing is uh, we're actually uh, getting the food because the, the woman that usually cooks for us, uh, it was got to be a little bit too much for her. So uh, I met with uh, Patty from Patty's Pierogies. Uh, matter of fact, last night we had a sit-down chat, and we're going to have uh, some gawumki and pierogi and kielbasa and some nice Polish breads and and uh, we're going to have some uh, music, you know, some Polish music, and uh, some polkas if you're up to it. And um, it's going to be a fun night. Well, I was you there know, last year when you had uh, Polish night, and it was really fine. As a matter of yeah, fact, yeah. The, the food was excellent, uh, delicious, and uh, the camaraderie in the, in the, in the, in the uh, area that you have in it is very comfortable. So um, actually... Uh, I'll be there Friday night. I'm looking forward to it. Now, yeah. uh, how long has uh, the American Legion been in that location in Somerset? Well, as I previously stated, the American Legion has been established in 1919. So, like I said, next year will be our 100th anniversary. And the Somerset Post was established in 1920. 19. So we weren't too far behind. Yeah. yeah. 1920. That, that's amazing. Yep, we've been in that building since 1920. It's an old schoolhouse that was uh, built, I believe, in 1889. It was a one-room schoolhouse. So it's and, a historic uh, structure? Oh, it is. It is. It's on a historic register. And um, it, uh, we've, we've, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a jewel. You know, it's a diamond and a rough. And we took care of it. We, we maintain it. You know, we keep it... Uh, well abreast and people that rent the place and we with one stipulation that you return it to the condition in which you found it you know and um you know we have uh, it's nice it holds a it holds by law 147 people but uh you know if we put 100 people in there it gets a little crowded so we we try to we try to keep it you know cap it off at 100 but now, um yeah it, and it's it, available it's available to the public if someone's out there and uh, they're uh, interested in joining the American Legion, could you give us a yep. rough idea of the qualification uh, uh, sure, needed? Sure, sure. Um, unlike uh, 
some other post, for example, the VFW, and I know, Richard, you're familiar with the VFW. Oh, yeah. VFW is Veterans of Fire and War, and um, it uh, essentially you need to have served in a combat area, and, and whether it be Korea or Vietnam or Afghanistan or, you know, Iraq, um, we, we take in uh, veterans and National Guardsmen and, and Army Reserve as well. Um, that have not served in um, a combat zone. I mean, we do have quite a few veterans, both male and female, that have served uh, in combat zones, I mean, because they are certainly qualified. And uh, interesting, when we, when we first um, took the post over about three years ago, we had 33 members, and we've had a, a very aggressive uh, campaign to recruit uh, new members, and we're close to 300 right now. 300, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, the last two years we were we were ranked number one in the Commonwealth out of 302 posts. Uh, now, how, how many posts, how many American Legion posts are there just in Bristol County? Well, it's, it's interesting because I am the, um, the District 9 Bristol County is called District 9. District 9. And I am the District 9 commander. And we have 22 posts. 22. And it goes from all the way from Fairhaven to Norton and um, Easton, all the way down to Seacock and anything in between. So, and with our newest post, which is in Taunton, um, post number 500. And uh, they're up and coming. They're, they're very, very strong. And they, um, they share a building and taught with the VFW post uh, 611. Now, and, do you uh, have do you have uh, district meetings? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Once a month. Once a month. We have a district meeting, and um, last month we had it in uh, Attleboro. Uh, this month coming, uh, which will be next Thursday, we're going to have it in the Seacock, the Seacock post, and then the month after that we're going to Fairhaven. So uh, what we try to do is we try to visit all the posts within the district or within Bristol County. And, um, you know, so some of those guys and gals don't have to travel far, far locations. But, um, yeah, I'm proud to say that uh, Bristol County or District 9 is, is ranked number one in, uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as now, far as membership is concerned. Do, do you have, a, 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 like, a state... Um uh, at, the, at the state level, is there, uh, are there offices uh, you might call yes, state? Yes, there, there is. It's, it's called the Department, uh, the Department of Massachusetts. And where is that Each located? State ha wh it's in Boston. They're, they're located right in the, uh, right in the state house. Oh. Uh, as is all uh, veterans organizations. I, I think we're right down the hall from the VFW, as a matter of fact. But there's a wing up there in the state house where all the veterans associations are located. You know, but I think we're right down the hall from the VFW, and and then they have the uh, AMVETS up there, and um, you know, those are the those are the three major ones that have been um, you know commissioned by the United States Congress. Now, do you have national offices? Do yes, we do. We do have a national office. It's in Annapolis, and um, and um, right now we we were just talking that uh, I think they just broke the. Two million, uh, two million member mark. Um, it's it's kind of sad because maybe ten years ago it was three million. So we're we're losing well we're losing a lot of the old time veterans. Uh, you know World War II because they're they're dying off and Korean War and and stuff. And uh, our challenge is is to recruit the, the new veteran, the veteran that's coming home from Afghanistan or or you know Iraq or you know wherever wherever they might have been deployed. Yeah, um, do you have, do you have we do. We offer a lot of benefits. Do you have an auxiliary at uh, your post? Yes, uh, we do. We, we not, matter of fact, our auxiliary is going to be meeting with us tonight, later on tonight. And um, what they do is uh, they help out veterans and veterans' families. Um, one of the things they do, and you probably see it during Memorial Day weekend, they run the poppy drive. Oh, you know, yeah. We usually go to walmart or different you know supermarkets and um that's another company that's been very very helpful is walmart and um what they do is we raise funds and you know people put change or a dollar or whatever they they choose to and and that money that money strictly 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 
is used for veterans and veterans' families. So uh, one of the issues that we'll be talking about tonight is uh, providing some some revenue for a member of ours who has a, a nine-year-old uh, daughter that has uh, some brain cancer, and and uh, we'd like to would like to help them out with some expenses um, because the two of them have become very very vigilant, you know, uh, watching over her, and they're missing work and. So those are the types of things. Uh, you know, another veteran not too long ago came over and needed to help, needed some help pay his water bill. So we we pay his water bill. Uh, another one had it needed some expenses uh, because the medical expenses were deductible that they they couldn't make make uh, ends meet. So a lot you don't hear about a lot of these things, Richard, because it's private. Those things are kind of private, you know. But we do. We do a well, lot, a lot of work. Fall River has a uh, on Pine Street an outreach center. Do, does Somerset yes, they have? Yes, do. You have one in and Somerset? Uh, no, we don't. We we basically use that one. And what we do is uh, this past winter we we did a, a big program and it was a big article in the Spectator. It was called Veterans Helping Veterans. And uh, what we did was we were helping the homeless, uh, primarily in the New Bedford area, but we. Um, it, it took a life of its own, and it just mushroomed and snowballed. And um, through the efforts of, uh, you know, another one was Walmart that, that made a contribution. And, and um, what we did was we bought coats and blankets and, and gloves and, and mittens and underwear and socks. And uh, matter of fact, I got a report just this morning that we raised over $41,000 for that effort. And, Let me... Um, we raised so much money that we, as a matter of fact, we have one guy his house is full of of, uh, of clothing that uh, we've got to make another um, drop off uh, to the Pine Street uh, Center. We did that uh, this past winter, but we've we've got Ocean State Job Lot gave us uh, I don't know how many boxes of brand new down coats, wow. and um, so. So, and, um, you know, totally non-used. Yeah. I guess they wanted to get rid of their inventory, uh, and we went to them, and they they really, really uh, reached out. And uh, we actually, there's a store that's uh, in, in New Bedford that we, we go through, and they what they do is they send all the stuff there, and then we pick them up. Last time we had three truckloads, and one of the trucks uh, we dropped off at the uh, Pine Street. No. And then we... Yeah, let me, we, we also go to the VAs, you know, like Brockton VA. Let me, let me just um, uh, remind the audience I have uh, a commander of the American Legion Post uh, on a line. He's called in. I spoke to him today, and I asked him to call in, and he was very courteous enough to uh, uh, reply yes. Uh, his name is Steve Souza. And he's been a very, uh, very involved in Veterans Affairs for years and years and years. And he's um, going to have a Polish night this Friday at the American Legion, and that's in Somerset on Roosevelt Avenue. Uh, tickets are twenty dollars, which is reasonable because you're going to get a great, great meal and uh, good camaraderie, some entertainment, and I'm sure much more. And they have a pool table, and I hear Steve is a real good pool player, so. You pool players out there, if you want to challenge Steve, <laughs> be my guest. Now, uh, Steve, uh, New, yeah. Bedford, New Bedford has uh, what they might call a, a veteran's shelter. Uh, it, yes, it's a, they do. It's, you're, um, you're familiar with that. Now, this Fall River, is there any, uh, is there any type of shelter like that in this area? Um, well, I think they, they coordinate it through um, a number of agencies. Um, that uh, I know my wife, when she was living, uh, she used to volunteer for the homeless, and she used to, uh, through various uh, churches, um, she used to, you know, keep keep vigilant, uh, you know, for, especially on cold, cold nights, because, um, you know, you get, a, you get a cold night. Yeah. You get a, you, you get a cold night, and uh, it can become very, very miserable out there, so... Um, but yeah, we we ended up going to that that center in New Bedford, and um, we brought uh, a bunch of clothes and uh, food. And um, it's uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the street it's on. It's one of the I think it's on Purchase Street, if I'm not mistaken. 
It's an old, it looks like an old church, actually, that uh, somebody may have uh, let them use or donate that, that space for. But, um, you know, good, good, good people that run that center. Now, and, someone, oh, someone, if the, someone wants to... Yeah, what, so if someone I just wants want to say to one thing, but, but the commander in New Bedford is a, is a policeman, a New Bedford policeman. So he sees, I mean, he works the streets and he sees what's out there in the homeless. And, and a lot of them are veterans, surprisingly. So uh, he does a good job up there. Now, um, if, if someone wants to join your post, um, yeah. of course, they would have to contact your post, get an application. What is the... Um, yeah. What, what is the... Um, uh, what is the fee? What is the charge? Well, what we do is uh, the fee is forty dollars a year, and um, if they're on active duty, if they're on active duty, um, we 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 buy their first year's membership uh, for them, and then they're required to buy it thereafter. Or if they're a World War II veteran, they get free membership. They get a free membership. Free membership. So, um, yeah. Yep, for World War II veterans, and if you're on active duty, and that's uh, the first year, we will pick up your your tab. You know, now we'll be happy to do it. Yeah, it's a way of us saying thank you. Now, th there is no such thing as a family plan, I imagine. Um, no, unfortunately, uh, in the auxiliary, uh, it's twenty-five dollars. Uh, if you want to join the auxiliary. And then we have what's also called the SAL. SAL, which is the um, um, Sons of American Legion. And that's $10 to join. But you need to have, um, you know, a father or a grandfather that has served um, in the military. Doesn't matter which, which branch. And, um, and we have, I don't know, we have about, I don't know, maybe 28, 30, the guys that are involved with that, you know, and they basically support because they're the young blood, you know, they're the arms and the muscle. So a, a lot of us old timers, you know, can't move around. Yeah. Things is what we what we used to. So now, do you have a, you have an honor guard? Guard? Um, we used to, um, and we we found out that post number one is uh, starting to put one together. Um, years ago, we did. Uh, we do have all the flags. And we have all the, um, you know, the, the, the leather uh, strappings and stuff. And um, so what we try to do, uh, you know, on occasion is we just go to the local police department and ask them for help, you know. But, um, but yeah, we, we're an older group, unfortunately, and, uh, and uh, some of us, unfortunately, can't, uh, you know, myself, I had uh, open-heart surgery, so... I can't be walking, you know, any any length of uh, a parade with a flag or any of that stuff. So, well, so what we try to do is go to the local authorities. I'm going to close it uh, close it down now with you, Steve. I have to uh, go into some uh, announcements that I'm uh, going to make. But I yep. uh, I thank you uh, very much. No, for, and I appreciate uh, it. Calling uh, in, you know, and I'm sure yep. I'm going to see you uh, Friday night. I'm going to get my pool stick all sharpened up. You get I'm, it ready. I know I'm going to have <laughs> quite a contest. So, Steve okay. uh, Souza, commander of the American Legion Post in Somerset, thank you for being on, and I uh, hope to have you come uh, come here uh, in person one day. So, thank you. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Now, I want to finish off uh, the uh, program with a couple of uh, announcements. And... Uh, one of the uh, things I want to bring to your attention is that come September, there's going to be uh, a, uh, a, you might call a celebration or a gala at the BFW, uh, excuse me, at the Venus de Milo, which is going to uh, be the uh, in, in, uh, recognition of the 50th year that the new Diamond High School has, has been on Stonehaven Road here in Fall River. Of course, Diamond, uh, the high school, is over 100 years old. It was uh, a celebration of that e uh, event at the Venus of the Milo some years ago. Uh, Diamond was started by a priest. His name is Father Diamond. 
and he felt uh, there was a need uh, for vocational education that uh, some of the uh, schools were not actually uh, supplying. So he, uh, he started uh, a vocational school. He, it's been called Diamond ever since. So that, that's going to be in uh, September at the Venus de Mayo. That's going to be a spectacular, spectacular event. The, uh, the other thing I want to mention uh, is come uh, Memorial Day, which is May 28th. It's a Monday at 11.30. We'll have a, uh, a ceremony at the Miller Monument in Fall River. The Miller Monument is located at the intersection of South Main and Shove Street here in Fall River, south end of uh, the city. And uh, it's named after Corporal David Miller. Uh, Corporal David Miller was captured uh, during World War II in the Philippines uh, when the Japanese invaded and he was put on the uh, Bataan Death March. They call it uh, a death march because uh, thousands of, uh, of uh, soldiers died. Uh, many uh, were Filipinos. Uh, they had to march 60, 70 miles, uh, hot, very hot conditions, and without, uh, in, in most cases, uh, uh, without water, uh, ad adequate food, uh, given no medical attention, and some of them were just outright murdered, shot, bayoneted. Uh, this is the treatment that the Japanese uh, gave to uh, Americans who surrendered and Filipinos who surrendered. And these soldiers had to surrender. There, were, there was no other thing they could do. They were pretty much out of ammunition, out of water. They were trapped, surrounded. They were being uh, shelled with artillery, uh, and it just was a matter of time before they were, would be all dead. So the, the best thing at that time was to surrender, uh, but the Japanese would not give them uh, the, the satisfaction of good treatment. So that'll be um, a ceremony that takes place at 1130 at the Miller Monument. It lasts for about a half hour have a number of uh, people who uh, will be there to uh, give some remarks, a speech or two, very interesting. So I'll be there, I'm the master of ceremonies. I hope you're gonna be there. And I think that pretty much takes care of the show for this, uh, for this episode, so thank you for watching. And if you're interested in any of these events, you can call Steve Souser at the American Legion in Somerset, or, or you can call me, uh, Richard Irvin. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.